EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour bring you the best young talent in the world of golf. From Harbortown Golf Links in South Carolina, live final round coverage of the Hilton Head Invitational. It is the great challenge that all these golfers face, trying to string four solid rounds together, trying to best mother nature and this course, and trying to beat the entire field as we check the leaderboard. Our leader here on this Sunday is our featured golfer. She's got a five shot gap on the field as she looks to potentially run away and hide. This has really been fun to watch, the evolution, the growth of an outstanding young player. And Noda now with a chance to win two in a row on the Corn Ferry Tour. What have you seen as you've watched the last couple of tournaments? Well, winning in consecutive weeks is about as common as seeing a $2 bill, which is you don't see it very often. And in this particular case, can the confidence garnered from that first win carry on to a second? Noda Begay is on the ground for us at the first green. And a very straightforward look here, down the hill with no break. Ah, the pace, absolutely perfect there. Down the slope, it's in for a birdie. And she'll move it to 21 under for the tournament. Here's a chance to make a birdie early in the round. Second hole at Harbor Town is a relatively short par five at a little more than 500 yards. Again, the key, and this is the case all over the golf course. You have to put your tee shot in the right spot. And here, it is on that left side of the fairway. And this round starting off strong after the birdie at the first. This in the fairway at number two. Really hit that second shot on the button to this par five, but Frank couldn't get it to stop. Yeah, too good, too long, sadly. About a 60% make percentage from here. This for birdie. Yes, can't ask for a better start to a round than this. It is back-to-back -back birdies at one and two. And she'll get it to 22 under par. This third hole at 469 yards is pure Harbor Town. It's narrow. The emphasis here is on hitting your tee shot in play. And a par is a good score, I promise you.
driving's been sensational all week, and here's another one that's going to set up nicely in the fairway. From the fairway, Noda, her second coming up. 153 yards left to the hole. Coming off back-to-back -back birdies, great chance to make it three in a row. Well, she should be happy with that shot. Good chance for birdie inside 20 feet. Lengthy putt here of 27 feet. That one just gonna sneak on by. So that, safely in, it's a par here at the third. And that's gonna keep this large lead right where it is. This is vintage Pete Dye, isn't it? Risk and reward, 200 yard, par three, fourth. Obviously, you need to carry that water hazard running the entire length of this hole. You're gonna miss, you miss right. Uh, you don't wanna miss it short or long, that's for sure. Uh, that's where the Gators are waiting for some golf balls. Solid shot, and sometimes solid throughout the round will win the day. So now this, right around 25 feet for birdie. You mm, needed a touch more speed, and that would have gone in. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four. And she'll remain at 22 under. The fifth hole at Harbor Town is the second of the three par fives at 549 yards. A good drive should leave players with the chance to try and reach this green in two. But one larger and one smaller bunker protect the left side of this deep but narrow green. Driving's been sensational all week, and here's another one that's going to set up nicely in the fairway. Has to be thrilled with that second shot here to the par five. Frank got everything out of that. Yeah, did well just to advance the ball so far down the fairway. And now a fairly straightforward third shot. Shouldn't be much in this for birdie. Oh, 
Yes, a good read. It's a birdie here at five. And she'll move to 23 under par. Another hole at Harbor Town where position, accuracy will be rewarded. This par 4 6, that 419 yards. Get it in the right spot, and you can make a birdie here. Nothing to fault there. Safety in the fairway. Perfect spot to play this second. Middle of the fairway. Now it's a decent sized green. It's not bad, just a little past the hole. Now this for birdie. And this is one where you just gotta keep the hand steady and the wrist quiet, making sure you get it started online. Oh, the pace was spot on. That ball somehow just decided not to go down. Safely in for par here at the sixth. And she's gonna stay at 23 under par. We've spoken already about the need for precision here at Harbor Town. That'll be put to the test here at the 195 yard par three seventh. Yes, there's water. Yes, there's sand. But the biggest issue, the two giant trees serving as gatekeepers to this narrow green. That one, safely on the putting surface. A long one coming up here for birdie. on that one. It's in for birdie. Her score will move to 24 under par. Now to the hole many consider the most difficult of all here at Harbor Town, the par 4 8. Finding the fairway is an absolute must off the tee as you will need to have the right angle of attack to approach this long, narrow green. Rhythm is definitely there to go. Another wonderful tee shot.
That's got to be disappointing. Good line in the fairway, and the approach winds up in the bunker. Safely out of the bunker, but still a little bit of work left. I think you'd like to see that a little closer. Mm, good effort, but that'll run two, three feet past the hole. That one finished off. It's a bogey here at number eight. And fortunately, with a big lead already, very little damage done. We wrap up the front nine here at Harbor Town with the 332 yard par four nine. What this hole lacks in distance, it makes up for by forcing golfers to be strategic off the tee. A large bunker prevents tee shots from running on, so best to lay up short and take a wedge into this boomerang shaped green. Well, you can't walk out and drop it any better than that. That is a fine tee shot right there. Just gave that way too much. And that needed to get down much sooner. That's on the green, but a good ways back there. We welcome in Iona Steven. This, a putt for birdie. Yeah, it's a good looking putt overall. Pretty straight, slightly down the hill. Need to be wary of that, but it's an inviting one. Mm, got it there, but not quite on target. Just to tap in there for par at the ninth. And that will finish off a three under start to the round as she goes out in 33. We head back out from the clubhouse to start the backside, beginning here with a 451 yard par 410. Anything left could very well wind up in that lagoon, but anything on the fairway could lead to an under par start to this second nine. Boy, she just seems to be on autopilot right about now. That, another good drive off the tee. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. That's a really solid shot. Smack bang into the middle of the green. She should be happy. Here we go. This one for birdie. Oh, yes. 
plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. And this is now, if you can believe it, a seven-shot cushion. This 11th hole at 436 yards is another test requiring precision over power. This fairway narrows the nearer it gets to this green, which is surrounded by four unique bunkers. Shoes there. Good tee shot in the short grass. So this, Iona, her second from the fairway. 1-3-1 one, one, all the way to the flag today. Pin, front right. It's a sneaky one. Another example of her, her excellent balance and timing, and that's a good shot. And the computer dials this one up at 26 feet. Ah, I nearly had it. Just going to wander a foot or so by. So that rushed in for par here at 11. And this lead, look at oh, so comfortable at this point. It remains at seven. On to the 12th now at 430 yards. We've had a handful of right to lefters so far. This one's gonna work the other way. As we've mentioned before, accuracy is the key off the tee, as some of those pine trees can reach out and grab you if your tee shot's not where it needs to be. That is dead center right down the middle here to start the hole. Perfect spot to play this second, middle of the fairway. I like the looks of this one. It was a good shot coming in here. I know it's a little long, but still, inside that 10-foot circle is always good and even money, really, to make birdie. Okay, that'll help the cause. It's a birdie here at number 12. And this lead continues to widen. It is just a procession now, as the difference is eight shots at the top of this leaderboard. This is one of the more visually striking holes here at Harbortown, the 373-yard par 4 13th. You've got trees flanking both sides, a few of which spring up right in the middle of the left bunker, leading to an approach to a slightly elevated green with Allen's dies, signature cypress planks all around. So simple when you're going good, doesn't it? 
And that is yet another solid drive. So after the big drive, this, a short approach to the par four. Okay, on the green, but it's going to leave a putt that will get your attention. Now this for another birdie. Ah, uh, nicely done. Two straight birdies here early on this backside. And this lead is going to swell to an unbelievable nine shots. The 14th now at Harbor Town, a par three at 190 yards. Don't let the fact that this is the number 18 handicap hole fool you. The danger is self-evident on this hole as water runs all along the right side of the green. Okay, that one's dancing. 14 feet to the hole. They're perfect. It is in for a birdie. And the lead is now into double digits. It's an insurmountable 10-shot advantage. Now to the lone par 5 on this backside, the longest hole on the course, the 588-yard par 5 15. This one is a toughie, featuring a narrow landing area off the tee with bunkers on both sides, as well as a somewhat blind second shot requiring a pretty good right to left angle of attack. Everything flowing really well right now. Coming off three birdies in a row. Here's another solid tee shot as well. Two solid shots, gets close to this par five green in two. I know the ball's in the rough, but it's not too bad. With a good short game, perhaps birdie.
Well, too bad, Frank. That one rolled right off the green. It was just coming out so hot. Yeah, good putt. That's in for par here at 15. And that lead already insurmountable. Gonna stay at nine shots. The final three-hole stretch begins here at the 434-yard par 4 16th. It's a dog leg left with an expanse of sand running along much of the entire left side of the hole. Once again, another great tee shot. Uh, I'm starting to wonder how low can you go? And the driving has been simply superb. After a good tee shot, Iona, this, her second. It's right around 117 yards to the front of this green. 121 to the hole. Pin tucked in the front left-hand portion of the green today. A little further right, a little further up. That would have been close. This will be a 14-foot putt here. Mm, boy, that's a good stroke. Just a fraction off target, but you can't get the speed any better than that. Okay, that'll be a par here at 16. And she's going to remain at 27 under. You come to the 17th hole, and you finally realize, that's right, I'm on an island. It's a par 3 measuring out at 174 yards. A spectacular view looking out over the water toward Defusky Island. The biggest issue here... That bunker that juts across the front and left portions of the green. And a rare missed green there, at least as far as this round is concerned, as that'll come up short off the tee. far here at 17 and her score is going to stay right where it is the 18th hole one of the real signature holes on the pga tour it's a par four at 472 yards sort of a visually awkward landing area you want to make sure you don't hit it through the fairway and into the hazard but a good drive sets up a gorgeous finish taking dead aim at that beacon of a lighthouse
is starting up the right side. Yes, step one out of the way. It is in the fairway at 18. One more good approach shot could just about seal it. So she will tap that in for her par at 18. Frank, unquestionably a satisfying victory for our featured player. Uh, you won 15 times on tours around the world, including the PGA Tour. What's the significance of the second victory? It's a great question, Rich. And I think that to answer you simply, it's huge. But to sort of uh, detail it more, the first one, there's always question marks. People tag around, is it a fluke? Were they lucky? Did they chip in on the last? So you work just as hard, if not harder, for the second one. And then when that happens, you feel validated and you feel finally over the hump. So for Frank Nabilo, notification.